Hey, what is up everybody? It's your boy King K and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best way to farm for artifacts in Genshin Impact. Now, this is going to be my complete guide. So I'm going to be providing you guys with all of the information I know. And of course, down below, I'm going to leave timestamps if you guys want to go and look up something specific. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's video and find it to be useful, head down below and make sure to smash that like button as it always helps with my content. And whilst you're down there, if you guys are new to the channel and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Furthermore, if you guys would like to know anything specific, you guys can leave me questions down below in the comment section. Without further ado though, let's get into the action. Now the first topic of discussion that I want to go over within this video and arguably one of the most important factors to always consider when doing artifact farming is knowing when to do it. Obviously the player will start obtaining artifacts at a very low level and as you go along within the story as you level up you'll start getting rarer and better artifacts. Alongside this fact you'll also start unlocking better and better domains within the game. As you guys can see I have access to the highest level domains because I am currently AR50. The max level of various different domains all depends on your AR rank. The max level for material domains unlocks at AR40 whilst the max level domains for artifacts unlocks at AR45. Whilst at AR55 and above, you'll start receiving the max level talent domain. The reason why this knowledge is so important is so that you don't waste your time and effort farming for artifacts or materials or talent books when you can't get the best stuff. Yes, of course, artifacts are the bread and butter to building up your characters, but 4 stars and not so much guaranteed 5 star domains aren't going to do the trick. You generally want to build your characters with the best artifacts possible and you can't get access to these artifacts unless you are AR45. Now you'll notice right here that the secondary max level to this domain or any of the other artifact domains contain legendaries or 5 star artifacts. However, this is only a chance of you getting a 5 star and the chances are pretty low. Whilst on the other hand, the max level for each of the artifacts domains also contain five star artifacts however this is a guaranteed drop so realistically speaking you should only focus on farming for artifacts once you have reached AR45 and unlock the max level for each artifact domain. You can of course use other star level artifacts in the meantime but don't focus too much on building up your character on these because 5 star is so much better than 4 star and below. Now the second topic that I'd like to go over with in this video is efficiency. As we all know we use resin in order to gain access to the rewards we gather when completing a domain. However, one of the biggest mistakes I often see people do is using original resin rather than condensed resin. Now, if you do not know what condensed resin is, basically head over to any crafting bench that you find throughout the game and the first option you'll be provided with is condensed resin. Now, in order to craft condensed resin, you need to use 40 original resin as well as one of these crystal cores. Crystal cores can be obtained by catching crystal flies throughout the map, whilst original resin obviously has a reset timer and slowly regenerates. Now, as for condensed resin, you can hold up to five at a time, meaning basically 200 original resin and five crystal cores. As you can see right here, I already have four, so I can basically only craft one. And there you go, I'm currently at a max stack. Now what Condensed Resin basically does, it allows you to purchase your rewards after completing a domain and get it twice as many rewards. Meaning that you can basically farm domains at twice the speed as what you would do when using Original Resin. I've gone ahead and quickly completed one of the domains that I usually farm. And when I come over here to collect my rewards, you will now see down below that you can use Condensed Resin. Now, I currently have a two times bonus on my original resin, but if you do not have that, you're only going to get one legendary or one five star item out of this. However, when you use condensed resin and I collect my rewards in a moment, when you. There we go. Okay. Obtain. You'll see that I got two five stars and a bunch of, of course, other level artifacts. But the main key here is that I've got a guaranteed 5-star artifact because I'm at the max level domain and I've gotten two 5-star artifacts out of this domain because I used condensed resin rather than original resin. Now, of course, since I went ahead and used one of my condensed resin, I can simply come back to the crafting table and just craft another one because I can hold up to five at a time and I've got enough original resin and crystal cores to make more. Now the third topic that I'm going to be going over is exactly how do artifacts work, how do their substats work, their main stats and then later on I'm going to be showing you guys how to really find out what artifacts to get for what character and depending on what bold you want to go for. First things first, every single artifact that you obtain has a main stat value. As you can see here this flower has a main stat line 
of HP. Now, something important to take note of is no matter what artifact set you are going for, there are two artifacts that always have the same main stat line. The flower, like what you're seeing right here, always has a main stat line of HP and they all have the same max HP value. I can switch over to my Wanderer and you'll see here the flower has HP as its main stat line. This one for Noel has the same HP stat line. I can go for a completely different set on my Utah, which again has a main stat line of HP. All the flowers have a main stat line of HP. The same goes for feathers. However, it has a main stat line of flat attack. As you can see here, Flat attack is maxed at 311, whilst on my Noel, completely different artifact set, also has ADK as its main stat line, and a different one as well, main ADK as its stat line. As for the rest of the artifacts, the hourglass, the cup, and the crown, they all have variable main stat lines. For example, right here on my Mona, I have a main stat line of attack percentage, whilst over here on my Noel, I have a main stat line of defense percentage so to summarize flowers always have a main stat line of hp feathers always have a main stat line of flat attack and the other three are variable so that's the first main rng factor the second rng factor comes towards the substats for each artifact now unlike the main stat line for the feather and the flower the substats can be different as you can see right here i have elemental mastery energy recharge crit rate and crit damage on my Mona's flower. Whilst on this other artifact, despite being in the same set, the substats are completely different. It instead contains elemental mastery, attack percentage, crit rate, and defense percentage. So that is the second main factor of RNG when it comes to farming for artifacts. Furthermore, around about 90% of the time, I don't have the exact percentage of RNG here. You'll likely get only three substats on a legendary or five star artifact rather than four. However, it is possible to sometimes obtain an artifact that already has four substats. For example, this flower right here, again, same artifact set only has three substats available to it now in order for me to find out what the fourth substat is going to be i need to level up this artifact to level four for example this flower that i showed you guys earlier only had three substats when i got it but now it's got four substats because it is currently level four now these substats as well as the main substats outside of the flower and the feather are completely random completely RNG and you don't know what you're going to get. Furthermore, the gains that you can produce within these substats are also completely RNG. If you manage to obtain an artifact with like 7% crit damage and the rest are kind of crappy substats, when leveling it up, there's no guarantee that that crit damage is going to actually increase. Which is why if I go over the different substats between the flower that I'm using on Ganyu and the flower that I'm using on Mona, despite being the same, you'll see that Elemental Mastery is plus 35, plus 11 on energy recharge, plus 10.1 on crit rate, and plus 15.5 on crit damage. However, the Ganyu flower is 9.7 on energy recharge, 9.7 on crit rate, plus 35 on elemental mastery, and plus 14 on crit damage. So the amount that these stats can increase by is also completely RNG, and the only way to really find out what they're really going to roll into is by leveling them up. These substats also increase every four levels. So once you unlock the fourth substat at level four, you'll get another level up to one of the four substats at level eight, at level 12, at level 16, and then at level 20 again. Five star artifacts, of course, can go up to level 20, whilst four star can only go to level 18, and the lower tier artifacts can only go up to their predetermined level. One thing to look at that is entirely not RNG is the level cap for the main stats of the different artifacts. As I mentioned before, HP caps out at 4,780 for all of the five star flower artifacts. Whilst on the other hand, despite being completely RNG of what stat you'll get as a main stat, for the hourglass, cup, and crown, the cap or the max that that stat can go up to will always be the same. For example, the hourglass that I have on here for Mona has attack percentage at 46.6%. Whilst the hourglass that I currently have on my Wanderer also has attack percentage and it's capped out at 46.6%. So the main stat line itself may be RNG, but the cap at which it can go to is not. Also similar to the substats that you find on the artifacts, all of these will continuously level up, just not every four levels. Holy crap, I've said the word stats, substats, and artifacts at least like a hundred times in the last 10 minutes. Let's carry on, shall we? Now, the fourth and final topic that I like to go over with in this video is knowing what artifacts to farm for what characters 
and depending on their build this may be very very different it's really simple though simply head over to google or bing or whatever else you use and search the character plus the word build i prefer going with this site right here that's called gamewith.net there's variable other sites although a lot of them contain this same information in a sense and of course you can obviously just you know search it up on youtube if you want a specific build that way again however i prefer gamewith.net and when you search for the build like what i did right here i search for mona build and i go into gamewith.net it's going to show me a absolute ton of information to start things off it's going to show me the rarity of the character obviously i know mona's already uh, a five star character its element what type of weapon they use and what the community rate them as now the further you go down you're going to start finding the different builds available for this character now the two main builds that you can build mona into is a burst dps as well as a hydro main dps i personally have her as a burst dps our secondary support for my hue tower now it's going to start off by showing you what is the best weapons for a specific character and it's going to go basically from best to worst as well as providing f2p friendly weapons that you can obtain without wishes the site will also show you exactly what artifacts you want to farm for depending on the build and what substats you're going for for each artifact now the further you scroll down you'll find more detailed information of course about the weapons however what we're looking for is the artifact pieces now Scrolling down a little bit further, I've found right here the Mona Burst DPS artifacts. Similar to the weapons, it's going to show you the best artifacts that you can possibly get, as well as two different substitutes. Now, naturally, you can combine different artifact sets, which is something that I'll go over just before the end of the video. For my Mona Burst DPS build, I can see that the best artifact set is a four-piece set of the Emblem of Severed Fate. The key thing that I'm looking for here, however, is the substats and their priorities. Now, once again, Flower is always going to be flat HP, whilst Feather's main stat is going to be flat 80k. However, the substats that I really want to find on each of these pieces and their priority is going to be labeled down below. So right here, I can see I want crit rate or crit damage, energy recharge and attack percentage. Now, if I can get all four of these substats on one artifact, that is the best case scenario. Obviously, again, it's RNG depending on what their levels go up to and how much crit rate, crit damage or energy recharge you can actually achieve on a substat. And that is why even despite having the good or let's say correct substats on an artifact, there could still be a big difference in strength depending on how high those substats go. Now that I know what artifacts exactly I am looking for, I can go back into Genshin and see if I can farm for an artifact containing that main stat and substats. Now the site mentioned that I need crit rate or crit damage, energy recharge and attack percentage. Now I've got elemental mastery, energy recharge, crit rate and crit damage, but no attack percentages. Naturally, it would be better if I did have attack percentage and not flat ADK. Let me point that out. Attack percentage on this artifact set. However, I've got good substats when it comes to energy recharge, crit rate, and crit damage. Elemental Mastery will still play a big part in how much damage I can produce out of this character. So unless I get a better artifact set later on, I can currently use this one because it is pretty good. So no, I don't have the best substats possible on the specific piece for Mona. However, that is kind of where the longevity and tediousness and luck comes into play when farming for artifacts. I am still, as I showed you guys earlier, farming the same domain for artifacts for Mona because despite this artifact piece being really good I can get better and obviously you want the best artifacts possible for your specific character build now I know I probably said that that was the final topic that I was going to go over but there's actually two more quick ones that I like to go over the first one being artifact sets now some sets only contain two pieces in order to complete a set whilst majority of the artifacts that you can get have a four piece completion Underneath my substats, I can see that if I have two severed fates on Mona, which I currently do, I will get a energy recharge of plus 20% bonus on top of all my stats, no matter what my main or substat may be. And if I have four artifacts from the same set on my Mona, which I currently do, I get an increase of elemental damage by 25% of energy recharge, a maximum of 75% bonus damage can be obtained this way. So it stacks. And again, Despite what my main stat might be, despite what my substats might be, this will always be a guaranteed bonus applied to me as long as I've got either two or four pieces from the same artifact set 
on my character. The fifth artifact can be anything you really want as long as it's good. So for example, if I head over to my Hue Tell, I have a four piece set of the Crimson Witch of Flames on her, whilst my flower is from a completely different set just because it's got really good substats and I've already got my four piece collection bonus right here for having four Crimson Witches of Flames. So the final one will not get any bonuses because there is no two to four piece set acquired from the same artifact set. However, my main focus is the Crimson Witch of Flames and getting their bonus. Now the absolute last topic that I would like to go over within artifact farming. I know it's a ton of information. It can get really complicated. There's tons of RNG, but I never said that it was going to be easy or fun to farm for artifacts because quite frankly it's not but it's necessary. Firstly is artifact leveling. Now you level up artifacts by consuming Mora and other artifacts. Now in order to level up an artifact you simply go down below to advanced and you can see the auto add button here which is going to add a bunch of different artifacts from your collection. I have currently mine set to four star materials and under because again I'm only farming for five stars and if I really go into it I've got a lot of artifacts because I don't use any four star artifacts. So simply add this, click enhance, it'll use a sum of your Mora and it will continuously level up. As you can see right here, this is gonna gain plus one level for all of these three star artifacts and you continuously do that over and over until it's max level. Now when you go ahead and level up a five star artifact in order to obtain the fourth substat and you don't like what you see, for instance right here, all of the substats are really good besides defense percentage I don't want it. Do not chuck it away, okay? Keep that artifact. Because when you go into another artifact that you really like to level up, you go to advanced. When you click on the plus button and you sort this by level, click it on the sorted button once, you'll see that that plus four level artifact is right there. Now, I added five three star artifacts in order to gain one level. However, when I add one level four five star artifact, you'll see that I'm gaining Three levels. Use the artifacts that you've leveled up and don't like as food for other artifacts to make it easier and cheaper for you to level them up. The final, final, final thing that I'd like to go over, I apologize, I have ADD, so things just completely slip my mind. When you go to the crafting bench right here and you click on the final tab available to you, you'll see that there's a bunch and bunch, if my camera was out of the way, there is an absolute ton of artifact boxes now if i'm farming for mona and i don't like any of the artifacts that i gained and i didn't level them up whatsoever i can go right here to crimson witch of flames and i can say add from here i can add up to three artifacts or more these are all leveled up so i'm not going to add them do not add leveled up artifacts use them as food to level up other artifacts i can add these three artifacts that don't have any level i can go down below hit mystic it's going to consume those three artifacts and it's going to produce one artifact from whichever set that you chose from. As I can see right here, this is an okay piece for Utah. Now I go compare it against a piece that I already have on my Utah. And if I don't want it, I don't level it up. I can come back here when I've got more five star pieces, add three or more and get pieces back. So I consume three in order to get one new one. But again, substats, main stats, what type of artifact you get. Is all orangey. Okay, holy crap. I think that I went over everything that you need to know. Again, this is a full guide. Hopefully, it's not too long of a video, uh, but there's a lot of information and a lot of things to cover when it comes to artifact farming. It cannot be done in a minute or so. It takes a lot of explaining and a lot of practice, honestly, in order to just get the knowledge into your head. With that being said, I hope I did help you guys out and I hope you guys found this to be useful. Could have probably been a quicker video. If my ADD wasn't playing games with me today. But like I mentioned before, if you guys did find this to be useful or enjoy the video, be sure to smash the like button down below. And if you guys want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe as well. And again, be sure to comment down below if you guys want to know anything specific. That's going to be all from me today, though. I hope you guys have an amazing day, evening, morning, further. I don't know where you're from. It doesn't really matter. I just hope you have a good one. Stay safe, much love, and it's been your boy King K. Peace.